You know, as a creative uh, filmmaker, uh, writer, actor, creative in general, what I've learned, especially even more this year, I mean, through many years, is to keep doing, is to keep making stuff and even make stuff that you don't personally find that fulfilling and challenging because there's other little nuggets in there that can come from it. And what I mean by it is this, you know, I've... You know, I'm trying to build more in filmmaking sort of brand and films and work as an actor. But we've all got to do the day job, we've all got to pay the bills. So I've been doing work that's kind of paying the bill work, you know, corporate video work, and um, working with a vlogger who interviews people. We're, we're at the Edinburgh Film Festival and we're at the Festival Fringe and she does vlogs in her home and bars and places and interviews people. And I, I even follow her walking through stores when she's shopping and Harvey Nichols and Michael Kors. And, and the reason I stick working with her is a job, but at the same time, she's great to get on with, funny to get on with, so it makes it, it makes it easier. It's better than working in an office, you know. At the, at the beginning of the year, I found it not very creatively fulfilling. You know, when you're sitting just with a camera interviewing somebody, um, it's no, you know, it's so, such a contrast from my filmmaking with my crime series and other films that are doing so great in contrast and more visual. Sitting with a camera is not that visually interesting, but it pays the bills. But I always try and do jobs that I can get something from. It's like Christopher Nolan used to talk about this, you know, the movie, the director's done Dark Knight and all those big movies when he used to do corporate videos and he still got something from them. You know, it was still on how to do lighting or sound or whatever. And I get it, I completely get it. But at the beginning of this year, it's like, what my, what my, what challenges am I getting from this as well? You do it for money, but you still want some job satisfaction. You still want to challenge yourself or you get stale. You know, and when I was making these, I was starting to find over the year um, that, okay, um, there was a, you know, I was like, I need to do these myself. You know, I can't have a small crew there or two or three years. I need to just, you know, at first I was doing the boom with somebody else and that was, it's not cost effective, you know, and it's not practical. So I managed to downsize it just to me, but try to keep the quality levels the same, the visuals and the sound. So I managed to downsize with technology and new sound units. And as time went on and I'm shooting bars and I'm shooting stores when she's shopping and I'm shooting at Edinburgh Festival, I had to be really fast with interviews. It used to take about 10 minutes to set up. I got it done to the point where I was setting up in 60 settings. And if somebody was there, I'm shooting within 60 settings. Being very mobile and contained, shooting on the mobile, different lenses, different sound units. Then I had to learn how to edit really fast. You know, so I changed my editing system so that I could cut vlogs really fast and cut her videos really fast and really efficient and be contained. And it came to the point that it was becoming so speedy and so fast and wherever we were in locations, like the same filmmaking, you don't get much time to shoot. I was shooting really fast. And I was starting to learn that these challenges were actually helping me. That in my other filmmaking, um, I've got a, a, a crime series called Crime Lord that I've started again. And the only reason I started that again, I stopped it and I thought that was it, was because of what I've learned on this, how to create fast, but still with quality. So it made me go at that say I think I can start Crime Lord again because I know how to do this now. I know how to be more efficient, speedy. And also I had a little showreel side thing that I was doing, making showreel uh, videos for actors, short films for actors, where I was writing, directing and producing them. Um, but they wanted to be cost effective because I was taking too long to actually do the post-production. So I stopped them. But in the last few weeks, it's like, I know how to do these now if I turn them into scenes rather than, you know, little movies. But I know how to be more efficient with them and faster so I can keep the cost down for myself and for the actors. The point I'm trying to make is it's easy to dismiss that this work isn't very challenging for me. You know, this work that I've been doing that wasn't apparently cha challenging at the start is actually helping me now creatively in the other more creative work that I do. And I think that's why it's important just to keep doing and keep doing because if you don't, your confidence disappears, you start to have doubts in yourself, but you're always learning something. And I think that's important. Everybody's so like, oh, this part isn't right for me. This film isn't right for me. I'm waiting to get this deal for this film. The more you keep creating, the more you learn technically stuff. As long as you don't get stale with it, to a big cop, level where you get steel weight and you're just taking lots of money and it's not very challenging that's different but I think um, at this level that I've found that I'm doing it has been challenging me it has made me realize how I can do my other work faster just as a great quality you know and it's kind of opened all this other area up all this other filmmaking up all this these other ideas that I had up it's opened them up because I know how you go into places very fast and shoot because the vlogs that I've been doing with Evelyn and the interviews. So yeah, I think that's why it's important to keep doing stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching.